Ground rumbles. 33 Raptor engines ignite in perfect synchronization. Starship Flight Test 7 lifts off the pad in a spectacular display of engineering prowess. And then, just hours ago, ends in a dramatic explosion that scattered debris across the sky. But that's just the beginning of what has become one of the most extraordinary weeks in spaceflight history. We witnessed history unfold as Blue Origin's New Glenn finally took to the skies. We saw not one, but two moon landers share a ride to space. And through it all, our incredible space community, that's you, helped us reach our 400th episode milestone. Elon Musk, 24 hours here. When we started this channel, we set out to document every breakthrough in spaceflight technology. Today's episode is special, not just because of these groundbreaking events, but because it marks 400 episodes of sharing this journey together. Between Starship's dramatic flight, New Glenn's maiden voyage, and two lunar landers beginning their journey to the moon, we have a lot to unpack. Each of these missions pushes the boundaries of what we thought possible, and we're here to break down exactly what happened. Let's dive right in. The sun hadn't yet risen over Starbase when the final preparations for Flight Test 7 began. Ship 33 and Booster 14 stood ready on the launch mount, representing the first Block 2 Starship configuration, a testament to space's continuous evolution. As daylight broke, those distinctive metallic test tiles caught the morning light, each one part of a complex puzzle in SpaceX's pursuit of full reusability. Among the 33 Raptor engines sat a historic piece of hardware. Raptor number 314, the PIE Raptor, marking the first time a reused engine would power a Starship booster. The countdown proceeded smoothly, and when those engines roared to life, the raw power was unmistakable. Ship 33 lifted off with purpose, climbing through the atmosphere on a more vertical trajectory than we'd seen in previous flights. During ascent, eagle-eyed viewers spotted something concerning, a piece of steel from the catch reinforcement system flapping in the violent ascent. Despite this, the vehicle pushed on. The boost back burn initiated 11 seconds earlier than Flight 6, compensating for the modified flight path. When stage separation came, it was a moment of pure engineering precision, the booster's engines shutting down in perfect sequence, grid fins actuating to redirect the plume. What happened next redefined our expectations of rocket landings. Booster 14 flew through its own ascending plume, vapor cone forming around the massive structure, its engine bay glowing hot from re-entry. The landing burn, though three seconds shorter than previous attempts, demonstrated masterful control. The booster settled onto the chopsticks with more force than ideal, visibly swaying after touchdown. But this second successful catch proved that SpaceX's ambitious recovery system was no fluke. The celebration was short-lived. Ship 33's journey took a dark turn as engines began shutting down one by one, not in their planned sequence, but in a cascading failure that spelled trouble. Fire emerged from the aft flap hinge, a visual warning of the catastrophic events to come. The explosion that followed scattered debris across a wide area, even affecting commercial air traffic. Later analysis from Elon Musk revealed a propellant leak above the engine firewall had created pressure faster than the vehicle could safely vent, but space exploration forged ahead. At Cape Canaveral, Blue Origin's New Glenn, playfully named So You're Telling Me There's a Chance, stood ready for its debut. The path wasn't smooth, an auxiliary power unit issue, an ice formation in a purge line threatened to derail the attempt. Yet Thursday brought their moment of truth. New Glenn's liftoff was unlike anything we'd seen before. Seven BE-4 engines, generating 3.85 million pounds of thrust, created a characteristic blue streak across the morning sky. The slow initial ascent gave way to an impressive display of power as the vehicle pushed through max Q. While the first stage recovery attempt wasn't successful, the primary mission achieved its goals, with the second stage placing its Blue Ring Pathfinder payload into the intended orbit. SpaceX's Transporter 12 mission further demonstrated the democratization of space access, carrying an unprecedented 131 payloads. Among them, SAT Gus brought space photography to the masses, while Varda W2 pushed the boundaries of pharmaceutical manufacturing in orbit. The mission showcased how routine yet revolutionary space access has become. 
The week's crescendo came with a historic double moon lander launch. For the first time, two lunar landers, Blue Ghost and Hakuto RM2, shared their ride to space. Blue Ghost, standing three and a half meters wide, carried a metric ton of hypergolic propellant and sophisticated navigation systems. Hakuto RM2, though smaller, represented a different approach to lunar exploration, planning a fuel-efficient four-month journey to the moon. Even as these missions grabbed headlines, crucial work continued in orbit. Nick and SUNY conducted the first U.S. spacewalk in over six months, performing vital maintenance on the International Space Station. Their six-and-a-half-hour EVA included work on the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer and crucial docking system components. India achieved its own milestone, successfully demonstrating indigenous docking technology in orbit after several attempts. As the fourth nation to master this capability, they've joined an elite club of spacefaring nations capable of complex orbital operations. Looking back at Ship 33's dramatic flight, we see more than just an explosion. We see the relentless march of progress. The successful catches of Starship boosters prove that seemingly impossible feats become routine through persistence and innovation. New Glenn's debut shows how competition drives the industry forward, and those moon landers carry humanity's deepest aspirations back to the lunar surface. The pace of advancement isn't slowing. SpaceX aims for another Starship flight next month. Blue Origin has already begun analyzing data to improve New Glenn's recovery system. India's space program continues to expand its capabilities. We're witnessing the transformation of spaceflight from the extraordinary to the expected, from the experimental to the routine. This isn't just another week in spaceflight, it's another chapter in humanity's greatest adventure. When regular moon missions become commonplace and Mars settlements take shape, you'll remember these moments. You'll remember being here, watching launch by launch, test by test, as we took our first steps into the solar system. From Starship's dramatic test flight to New Glenn's historic debut, from twin moon landers beginning their lunar journey to groundbreaking spacewalks, this week has shown us that space exploration moves at an unstoppable pace. Each setback teaches us, each success drives us forward, and every mission brings us closer to becoming a truly spacefaring civilization. The story of space exploration isn't just about the rockets and the technology. It's about all of us who dream of pushing boundaries. That's why we at Elon Musk 24 Hour work tirelessly to bring you the latest developments, breakthroughs, and analysis of everything happening in space exploration. Join our growing community of space enthusiasts by subscribing to Elon Musk 24 Hours. Hit that like button if you want to see more coverage of groundbreaking missions like these and share this video to spread the excitement of space exploration with others who share our passion for discovery. Drop a comment below with your thoughts on this week's developments. What milestone impressed you the most? The Starship catch? New Glenn's debut? Or perhaps those ambitious moon landers? Stay tuned for our next video as we continue tracking humanity's greatest adventure. Until then, this is Elon Musk 24 Hours, keeping you connected to the future of space exploration. The moon has been waiting for humanity's return. While NASA's Artemis program plans to send astronauts back in 2027, SpaceX isn't content to wait that long. In fact, Starship might touch lunar soil this year, in 2025, as NASA recently announced delays to their crewed missions, pushing Artemis 2 to 2026 and Artemis 3 to mid-2027, SpaceX has been quietly advancing their own lunar timeline. Hidden in plain sight at Starbase, Evidence is mounting for an unprecedented mission, an uncrewed Starship lunar landing, potentially just months away. The clues are everywhere. An HLS airlock spotted in the Star Factory, applications for 25 Starship launches, a dedicated team working on orbital refueling technology. While the world focuses on NASA's schedule shifts, SpaceX is methodically assembling the pieces for what could be one of the most ambitious space missions of 2025. This isn't just another rocket launch. If successful, this mission would mark the arrival of the largest spacecraft ever to touch down on lunar soil, transforming our approach to moon exploration forever. 
The stakes are enormous and the timeline is aggressive, but that's exactly how SpaceX operates. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours, and today we're going to explore exactly how SpaceX plans to land Starship on the moon this year, what it means for the future of space exploration, and why this mission could change everything. Let's dive right in. The space race has entered a new era, and the moon is at its center. Nations worldwide have set their sights on lunar dominance, but one company stands apart in its bold approach. While NASA's Artemis program commands headlines with its scheduled return of humans to the moon, SpaceX has been orchestrating something extraordinary behind the scenes, a mission that could rewrite the timeline of lunar exploration. Late last year, NASA's announcement sent ripples through the space community. Artemis II would slip to April 2026, with Artemis III following in mid-2027. But buried within these headlines was a detail that few noticed. SpaceX's uncrewed lunar landing remained on track for 2025. This mission, far from being a mere technological demonstration, represents a turning point in humanity's relationship with space exploration. The mission's blueprint emerged from a roadmap revealed last year, outlining the critical steps toward making Starship lunar ready. At its heart lies an ambitious plan. Launch an uncrewed Starship HLS, human landing system, to the moon's surface by late 2025. But achieving this goal requires more than just a spacecraft. It demands a complete revolution in space technology. At Starbase Texas, this revolution is already underway. The transition to Starship 5-2 marks a crucial evolution in the vehicle's capabilities. Flight 7, anticipated for March, could be the breakthrough moment SpaceX has been waiting for. Success here wouldn't just validate the vehicle's design, it would open the door for the lunar mission's next critical phase, orbital refueling. The refueling system represents perhaps the most ambitious element of SpaceX's lunar strategy. It's a dance of orbital mechanics never before attempted at this scale. Picture this, a Starship HLS launching into orbit, followed by up to 10 tanker missions, each carrying the fuel needed for the lunar journey. This isn't just about filling up a tank. It's about proving that long-duration spaceflight is sustainable. Recent developments at Starbase have only fueled speculation about the mission's progress. An HLS airlock spotted within the Star Factory suggests that preparation for the lunar variant is already well underway. This isn't just another piece of hardware. It's a tangible sign that SpaceX is moving from planning to execution. The company's application for 25 Starship launches from Starbase in 2025 reveals the scale of their ambition. 11 of these launches could be dedicated to the lunar mission alone, one for the HLS vehicle and 10 for the refueling operations. This isn't just ambitious scheduling, it's a statement of intent. But SpaceX isn't just building a lunar lander, they're creating an entire infrastructure for sustained lunar operations. The potential introduction of a fuel depot in orbit would transform the refueling process from a complex choreography of multiple launches into a more streamlined operation. This isn't just about reaching the moon, it's about establishing a permanent presence there. The landing itself would be historic. Starship would become the largest vehicle ever to touch down on lunar soil. Unlike the Apollo missions or even NASA's planned Artemis landings, this spacecraft isn't just designed for short stays. It's built to become part of the moon's future infrastructure. The test program following landing would be comprehensive. Airlocks, elevators, life support systems, all crucial components for future crewed missions would be put through their paces. This isn't just about checking boxes. It's about proving that sustained lunar presence is possible. The timing of this mission carries strategic significance. Success in 2025 would give SpaceX over a year to refine their systems before Artemis III. This isn't just about meeting NASA's requirements. It's about exceeding them, pushing the boundaries of what's possible in lunar exploration. Meanwhile, SpaceX isn't waiting idly for the Starship lunar mission. Their Falcon 9 rocket continues to play a crucial role in lunar exploration. The upcoming Blue Ghost mission, set for January, will carry Firefly's lunar lander in Japan's HAKR mission. These missions aren't just about delivering payloads, they're about building experience, gathering data, 
in preparing for the greater challenges ahead. The IM-2 mission follows, featuring Intuitive Machines Lander and NASA's Lunar Trailblazer Orbiter. Their focus on lunar water ice exploration isn't just scientific curiosity, it's about understanding resources that could sustain future lunar bases. Later in 2025, the Griffin mission aboard Falcon Heavy will deliver Astrobotics Lunar Lander, further expanding our understanding of lunar resources. But these missions are just preludes to the main event. The uncrewed Starship Lunar Landing represents more than just a technical achievement. It's a paradigm shift in how we approach space exploration. While NASA's SLS program continues to face challenges, with costs exceeding $122 billion per rocket and $4 billion per